we have to, the world to say, okay, look, for you to be courageous, follow your heart. I mean, I don't know how many times, if you grew up in a generation that watched any movies, you've heard that, right? Yep. Do what your heart tells you. If you grew up in a generation like me, that, uh, you know, I think that's why we have a bunch of sissy guys, is we grew up in a generation with a, a romantic comedies. That was the thing in the 90s, right? What's, what's the main theme of all those romantic comedies? Follow your heart. By the way, I, I could never stand it. My brother loves those. By the way, I mean, if he ever sees it, it you know, he still loves them to this day, so he, he won't hold it against me. But it's either follow your heart or follow Christ, right? Turn to Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah 17. And we're going to be in verse 1, 1 through 10. Jeremiah 17. What does the Bible tell us, uh, you know, about following our heart versus following God? Jeremiah 17, uh, verse 1, he's talking to, to Judah, and it says, The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron and with the point of a diamond. It is graven upon the table of their heart and upon the horns of your altars. See, the Bible tells us to write his word in the table of our heart. What they do, they wrote the sin on the table of their heart upon the horns of their altars. Whilst their children remember their altars and their groves by the green trees upon the high hills, O my mountain in the field, I will give thy substance and all thy treasures to the spoil and thy high places for a sin throughout all thy borders. And thou, even thou thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not, for ye have kindled a fire in mine anger which shall burn forever." Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. For he shall be like the, he uh, like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when, God, when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabit it. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and to spread out her roots by the river, and shall not see when the heat cometh, but her leaves shall be green, and shall be and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked, who can know it? I the Lord search the heart, I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways, and according to the fruits of his doing. So we see here, if we trust in man, and in ourselves, in our sin, it's a curse. And God knows that too, right? The Bible says, be not deceived. In other words, we shouldn't be acting, we shouldn't lie to ourselves. And that's kind of what the world does. You know, when we pretend that courage is controlling fear, that's a lie, not only to the people that we're preaching it to, but to ourselves. And the more we preach that to ourselves, the harder it is for us to stand on God's word and his truth. And I really believe that's one of the reasons why it's so hard for preachers to get up and be unpolitically correct in all their sermons or to preach the entire word of God because what ends up happening is you end up thinking about maybe the sin in your life or who you're going to offend in, in, in the congregation and then you think well you know my heart says that I shouldn't do that because that guy in the back I know he's a fornicator and an adulterer but he's his ties are bigger than everybody else's I mean that's how these churches are run right or the youth of this world they're into everything, but how do we keep the youth in? Well, we shouldn't offend them so easily because then they'll leave. And that's what's happening, right? We got all these great programs and, and all this rock music and all this gyrating and, and, you know, scandalous dress from women and men. And, you know, you can't make up one from the other. Why? Because they're following their heart. They're not following Christ. And Jeremiah is specific. He says, look, you're writing these sins on your heart instead of writing the word of God. And so... We should, follow, we should follow God with no fear, except for the fear of God, right? And then we should follow.